just shut the truck down so we can see what happened, what we're doing. We can talk about it, hear what we're doing. So we got the gauges on there, you guys saw that. Right, we're looking for a direction. We check the belt. The belt is on. And earlier, right there is the compressor. The outside part of it, the clutch was not engaging. So looking for a direction. We don't want to, we don't know if it's an electrical issue, if it's a pressure issue. So put the gauges on, our pressure's good. Now we have a direction. We're gonna look at it electrically and see if we have a high or low pressure switch or even the power wire to the compressor. <clears throat> because with this kind of pressures, rest pressures will run about 90. Um, the compressor is not turning on. So we have enough refrigerant to at least energize the compressor. So we can assume that it's an electrical issue. We're gonna start going that route right now. I know you won't be able to see much of this on camera. It doesn't like to focus on the small stuff. We're looking at a schematic. We've got our main power relay. Wire comes out, 112 purple, goes to our AC breaker, that's a 15 amp. From here, goes out here from the breaker. We go all the way over here. One twenty four green goes to our blower motor switch, comes out of our switch on five twenty one yellow. Here's five twenty one yellow right here. Five twenty one yellow goes to our AC refrigerant pressure switch, comes out of that switch five thirteen orange goes to our compressor clutch out of our clutch, come back up here, 522 white, right over here, 522 white, right here, goes to our thermostat switch, out from the thermostat switch, goes to ground. I would like to redraw the schematic. Here's the schematic symbol for a battery. We've made our main relay, just a switch. There's our wire 112, goes through our breaker. Comes out 124 green, goes to our blower motor switch. So the so I like to do it this way. I'll study the schematic so I can learn how the circuit's supposed to work. Right? We know the batteries are good, we know the main power relay is good, we know the breaker's good, but we've also learned that our blower motor switch has to be turned on to an AC setting, which it is. So blower motor switch is on low right now. Power's going through our high or low pressure switch. So it's normally, I drew this wrong. This should be connected right here straight through. And these other two should be opens. So it should look like this. Go in there and not here yet. I kind of jacked that up. Anyway, if our high and low pressure switch is good, this wire is connected to 513 orange. If it's high or low, then it's gonna to switch to either one of these other two settings, which is open. It's not just like unplugging a connector. Okay, goes through our AC compressor clutch, which we've just drawn that as a switch, just for simplicity. Out of the clutch, goes to our thermostat switch, which is also inside the cab. After that thermostat switch, it's grounded. So now we know that coming from this main power relay, anywhere along the way, we should have power. We should have power all the way through the clutch, we should have power through the high and low pressure switch, we should have power basically through the thermostat switch. And the reason we have power here is because the current has not found ground until after this thermostat switch. That's when it finds ground. So anywhere before this point, it's gonna be power. So now we've just simplified our entire circuit. We're gonna grab a test light, just quick and dirty. We get in there, we can start stabbing stuff. Just kidding, I would never film that. Uh, but we'll use spoons, we'll back pin connectors all along the way. We're gonna start right here at this high low pressure switch. Now it's just a guess, but at least we have to pick somewhere to start. I know the relay's good, I know the breaker's good, I know the blower switch is good because it's blowing inside the cab. So we'll just start at that high pressure switch. And now we have a direction. I like to study the schematic like I was saying to, to uh, learn the circuit. I don't use the schematic to troubleshoot. I like to use the schematic so I can see how the circuit is supposed to work when everything's good. Now we know. I've redrawn it here on my notepad 
so I'm not carrying around a four by six sheet of paper that's a schematic. Now I'm just carrying this around and I can draw notes and I can, I can do whatever I want. But anyway, test light, let's get into it. One other thing guys, I forgot to mention. So this is just a quick and dirty schematic, right? But normally when I redraw them, I do this all the time by the way, because it just makes life easier. But normally I'll redraw them and I'll have little stuff like this. That tells me, the P8 tells me that this is pin number eight on connector AJ, or pin number 10 on the operator's monitor. And that way, uh, if I'm troubleshooting the entire circuit, I know which, uh, which connectors and which pins I need to test. So normally, like I said, you'll see on some of my other schematics, some of them are, this book doesn't really have any of the complex ones. I've redrawn this small leg of the circuit. This is our high-low pressure switch, right? So when the pressure's good, the switch is closed. Now, if the pressure gets too high, it's gonna open up here to the high side, which is then going to take power away from the compressor. The pressure will then fall inside the system back down to a safe level. The switch will re-energize, it'll, it'll close again, and then it'll start powering up the compressor again. And of course, if the pressure gets too low, It'll drop off and it will cut power to the compressor in an effort to save the compressor, to keep it from grenading and sending all that debris through the system. I got the test light and spoons, but also from looking at this circuit, we know that we can unplug this connector right here and we can jumper these two together. Now, if we do that and we hear our compressor clutch click, then we know that everything after this switch is good uh, because our compressor clutch clicked. That means that it sent power to the clutch and it found ground through the thermostat switch and grounded, making a complete circuit, right? Now, we also can assume that this side's all good. Like I said, the relay's good because it powers up everything in the cab, the breaker's not popped, and our blower switch is running on low speed right now. So right now, this is the, this is the side of the circuit right here, this little section is kind of our focal point. So let's check that out. That's just gonna be a quick test. We'll jump it together. We hear it click. We know 100% confirmed the switch is bad because by jumping it together and hearing it click, we also know our wiring is good. Check it out, guys. I haven't even back pinned it. I just unplugged it and heard it click. Listen to this. Well, we know our wiring's all good. We may have just had a real bad connection here. Let's get some no flash. I'll get that cleaned out. And uh, I'm pretty sure that's all it was. Very, very simple troubleshooting. But would we have known to go straight to this high low pressure switch if we hadn't taken the 10 minutes to study the circuit on a schematic and another five minutes to draw it out in a quick hasty fashion? Got some no flash here. Oh. We'll do the other side of that connector, plug it back in. Blowing about 54 degrees out of the vents right now. 53. It's going down as it keeps running. This is just my voltmeter with a little thermocouple on it. Going down into the vent there. I've already closed the high side valve the compressor the low side is open we're gonna open both of these we're gonna let the low side suck the pressure out of the high side back into the system before we close the low side and unhook our gauges all the way you can see in the window here that's all liquid that's liquid refrigerant side. 
quick. Just another quick shot of our gauges. Just after they're unhooked. Last thing to do now is to put these two caps back on. Uh, people don't realize, but these are actually the main part of your seal on those Schrader valves. And uh, a lot of times you can, when you crack these loose, you'll hear a real small, just a little pss of refrigerant because there's an O-ring inside of this cap. Also helps keep all the dirt and junk out of the Schrader valve itself.